We haven't ran our intro forever. No, we haven't. Good morning, everyone. Good morning, everybody. <laughs> Craig's already checking the top stuff. <laughs> Good morning, Darcy. Good morning, Jeffrey. Oh, so Good funny. luck, Craig. Yeah, but it, it doesn't look like it's working. So let's work on that. Maybe it had to wait until we started. Maybe. We'll give it that. Try it again, Craig. Yeah. Oh. Oh, we've been here. <laughs> we've been here. <laughs> Good morning, Patricia. All right, well, let's try fixing it. So Darcy gets to watch me fix it while everybody else just gets to stare at our page. Oh, uh, you want me to tell some jokes? Yeah, everybody loves um, your jokes. <laughs> and I think I might tell be them the slowly. Only one, this I'm... is going to be a minute. Oh, there's this one has a lot on it. Good. Uh, I told Je Jeff this one already. I used to hate facial hair, but then it grew on me. <laughs> I don't know if that's funny. I was scared for a second. It was like when you said, I told Jeff this one. I was like, oh no. Yeah. <laughs> not the forbidden no, list. Not the forbidden no. list. Yeah, that makes, that makes me sad. I'm going to pretend like that doesn't exist. Uh, my dog is a genius. I asked him, what's two minus two? He said nothing. Okay. Maybe you have to be a dad to tell these jokes. Mm. I don't know. Why are you <laughs> not working? Let's add a little tool. Uh, we're renovating the house and the first floor is going great, but the second floor is another story. <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> I'm reading an anti-gravity book and I just can't put it down. Well, that's a problem. <laughs> uh... My boss asked me why I only get sick on work days. I said it must be my weekend immune system. <laughs> <laughs> that's, a, that's really funny. Uh, I like that one. I like that one. So is it YouTube that shut me down? I'm trying I don't know. to think. I can tolerate algebra, maybe even a little calculus, but geometry is where I draw the line. Haha, uh -huh, math joke. Have you heard the new quarter? Have you heard about the new corduroy pillows? They're making headlines. <laughs> Sorry, that one's so stupid. <laughs> you know, too bad these are other people's jokes. You could be going like they should have like uh, other people joke comedy, where you can they go. They do. And Oh, you can no. go and do other people's jokes up on stage? No, well, <laughs> like there's punchline like... punchline jokes or something? Yeah, there's like TikToks and stuff. There's, I've seen some where there's, there's one where it's a couple guys, um, a few different guys, and they'll just tell each other dad jokes, and it's pretty funny. Um, but yeah, there's, I, I think there's quite a few mm. channels out there, at least TikToks, where people will go. And that's like their whole thing is telling jokes, stupid jokes. All right. This isn't working. We're not going to waste our time doing this. I'll have to no. invest some real time. Me and Craig will play later. Why are, blo why are okay. balloons so expensive? Inflation. <laughs> oh, wait. 
<laughs> he tried not to laugh. <laughs> well, there we go. Let's try that. Uh, it may, I might have just fixed it. It's always the little booleen. What? Say that one again. Oh, no, I was just saying it's always a little boolean. I saw oh, you, like, you saw what little... I did. Yes, yeah. you saw, <laughs> like... so you got the inside joke. Yeah, for the audience, it looks like our chat bot was turned off, and it's just like a little switch. And it's funny because it's gray, and it's not noticed. Oh, yeah, there we go. Oh, man, it's catching hey. up. <laughs> it's reading chat, and it's going to catch up for everybody. Uh, Patricia, your heist didn't have a space in it. So you need to put a space between your money amount and the keywords. So the exclamation keyword and then a space. So, cool. Looks like it's ready to roll. Sweet. Yeah, it's always the boolean. You are right. So I'm gonna close this. I'm gonna go here. And I think I can move this out of the way so I feel like I can put some info in there. Make it a screen. Oh, that guy looks scary. All right. Those were good jokes. Actually, those are probably your best jokes ever. Yeah. Well, it's because they're dad jokes. Their dad jokes are pretty good. Well, they were just good quality ones, too. I really I like the... <laughs> my weekend immune system. <laughs> that one, that I one feel like me. that one was written for me. I think it was written for a little, like, pretty much Everyone. everybody. Yeah. Yeah. I felt bad for Link. You know, it's funny because it's the weekend and then he's got a job that requires weekend work. And so yeah. um, he has to go on the weekend to the casino. Because they never close. Never close. Nope. Nope. Uh -oh. I did weekends for a lot of years. Yeah. Ah, wait, I'm trying to think if I really ever had to. I don't think I was a weekend guy. Lucky. Yeah. I'm trying to think. Craig didn't Although really I did... much either. I mean, beginning, but. Go ahead. You did what? Uh, I, my schedule was always all crazy and I didn't drive a lot or I didn't have a car often. So I, I usually liked having like Monday or Tuesday off because then if I needed to do anything like banking or grocery shopping and stuff like that was just easier. So I never really cared if I didn't have the the weekend off, but I'd always liked having like a beginning of the weekday off. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. He's got two consecutive days. So it's just a adjusted weekend. It's all the same. Yep. And I agree with you. It's kind of nice not being, not um, having to worry about the extra crowds and the busyness and be able to get some stuff done. But then also everybody plans their stuff for the weekend. So then. Yeah, you miss out on things. So it's just given. Yeah, you. yeah, it is. It's it's hard. It's just but like luckily, everything. I don't have a lot of friends, so. It, <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's funny. It's sad, but funny. All right. It's okay. I'm okay with it. Yeah, maybe someday you'll find a friend. One day. But it's it's that it's that. Uh, did we decide if that's your wife in the background? How do we refer to your significant other in the background? Or is that just in the a background roommate? Of what? <laughs> Nothing. I'm still going back to the one picture where that lady is like oh. coming in the door for your background mom. of your day. <laughs> your mom. That's your mom living that's with your the mom. mom. Yeah. yeah. Just, I guess that would be the mom. That's probably what they're trying to do. In, yeah. Inside joke, we'll show the picture someday that we've been talking about on the that I keep bringing up. <laughs> yep. That I keep forgetting about. I'm like, oh, yeah. You're like, Rick wife what yeah, i'm not I'm following confused. this <laughs> who's in the background who can you see <laughs> no, that that is a good one that was hilarious i i don't know there was a lot of laughter that day for sure yeah, good times so today not laughter just education yep. Yep. <laughs> and a little bit of scariness so we're kind of continuing with uh, a little bit of extra Halloween theme. Not really, but just this, this first picture is a little scary. Um, but today we're going to talk about the Manhattan Project. 
For those that don't know, what is it? Oh, you don't know. So I guess yeah. we'll have to tell I you. I did let a, a quick look to make sure that I was drawing my picture correctly. Um, but it it was, was it the creation of the atom bomb or did it? I mean, I, I believe it had something to do with the atom bombs. Yep. I think it's the creation of the atom bomb, the project that did that. But I don't know if it's also maybe the project that led to some other nuclear power type things. Mm -hmm. So I don't know how much of a, um, how much split we atoms period. we did before that. So. Yeah. Cool. Oh, we should have brought in um, how there's the theory about aliens. Once we did the bomb, that's when the aliens started coming. Oh, yeah. Like a. Like a calling card. Like Avengers. <laughs> like I was Avengers. like, what movie did they say that? <laughs> They're like. Yeah, that that's the you you know you you mess around with a tesseract or whatever, and then so then you let everybody know that you're you're ready for the next level. I think that's been in a few alien movies though. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. It's a common theme because I mean it. Yeah. <laughs> we don't know, so we just get to make up stuff until the yeah. aliens come and tell us. Like, and uh, we never notice that. Yeah, we need to start making up some new stuff though. I do yeah. enjoy all the, the, the movies and stuff that have been coming out, but man, it's getting uh, old. <laughs> oh, I got a good movie. Yeah? Yeah. It's called Hard Living on the Creek. And it's about this family of ducks that has to survive on the creek, right? Is that and... your movie that you watch every day out? <laughs> Wait, <laughs> how did you know? How did you know? I was like, I was just looking out the that... window, coming up with the movie. <laughs> Yeah. Well, it must be good if you watch it every day. <laughs> it's interesting. It's really interesting. Yeah. yeah. But um, you're right. They need to come up with some new movies. I think there's a little bit, like, there's little trickles, but there isn't much. That's why I don't really watch movies anymore. Um, like new ones. I don't. I don't hurry out to get to go see them, or I don't feel like there's something that I need to see. What does everybody else think? No squirrel fights. Oh my gosh. Squirrel. Oh, the squirrels. The squirrels are crazy. The ninja squirrel? Huh? Uh, yeah, we had ninja squirrel. I have video of ninja squirrel. <laughs> that one, like, that was like months of that squirrel training out there. It was the <laughs> best. Oh, yeah. Ninja warrior squirrel was awesome. But then, um, but then the squirrel fights, uh, watching squirrels drop out of trees and fight and stuff like that. That's pretty cool, too. So, yeah, he could do a whole little wildlife, real, real life, wildlife type thing. Yeah. At our last house, uh, there was a bunch of trees in the, you know, in the backyard. And when I went out there, sometimes, I don't know, I'm assuming, I can't remember the time of year. I mean, it's Florida, so it could be really any time, but sometimes there would just be so many squirrels, like dozens just running around and, um, in the trees. And it was kind of gross. Like, I've never been grossed out by squirrels. I've always thought they were cute and they're funny when they do fight and stuff. But there'd be so many, it was gross. It was like, ooh, they do kind of look like rats. <laughs> and they're just everywhere. So. Yeah. Yeah, they're just tree rats. Yeah. So that's the only time I didn't like. I mean, I wouldn't do anything to hurt them. But, man, it was gross. You're like, ooh, I need to go inside. I feel, I need, feel like I need a shower after. <laughs> seeing that many squirrels running around we had um i was talking with my mom about the fact that i've never seen a cat get a squirrel that's one combo i've never seen a squirrel and a cat go at it which is interesting based off what you said and what what in general you know, everybody knows that squirrels are everywhere. So then yeah. basically just tons of rats everywhere. And then, but I don't ever, I don't ever see a cat bring like a dead squirrel to the door. You know, they get mice and they get chipmunks, things smaller than them. But a squirrel is smaller, but I think it's, it's a little it's tougher. Big, yeah. yeah, that's, I, I don't think a cat mess. I don't think cats mess with squirrels really. 
They're kind of mean too. Oh, <laughs> Heck yeah, they are. After I watched, I watched them do like some mean stuff out here. They'll chase each other down, throw each other out of the trees. Yeah. Oh my gosh, and just keep going at it, like just totally running them off. Like they are territorial. Yeah, it is. It's interesting. I saw a mink yesterday. Or Lincoln, I saw a mink. Yeah, that's pretty cool. Mm-hmm. Yeah, nice. see, that's rare. That's like I said. That's more rare than the eagle. We have, we've seen the eagle more often than the mink. Nice. Well, he's never seen Ooh. a mink. But I've seen. Yeah, I've never. Times. I don't think I've ever seen one. I put a mink saw, in. The, oh, go ahead. Oh, I was just gonna say I did see a bald eagle. Uh, when you said that, reminded me. Uh, we were when we were driving back from Disney. I saw one. I was gonna say I put a mink in almost a category of like a fox, not like family wise, not relation, but just like you don't see foxes too often. No, and I've so, only seen one once. Mm-hmm. I've only seen them a few times in my life. Same with the mink. I mean, I haven't seen it very often, but it's a pretty big ferret. You know what I've seen down here that I never weasel. Like I still think is weird is armadillos. Like, <laughs> you I have mean, armadillos like- in Florida. Yeah, I've seen, I mean, you'll see a dead one on the side of the road occasionally, but um, when you go to, like, some of the parks and stuff, you'll just see them, like, hobbling around, and it's so cool, and, like, t- there's tons of turtles down here, too, but, um, yeah, armadillos, I think it's, I did, I find. I told Rick, I finally saw a deer, so there's deer down here, too, and the whole time I've lived here, I've never seen one, um, no, I really and I did. Deer. I did see a deer, but it was dead. But no. <laughs> like, well, at oh, least you there... knew it was alive yeah. around. Oh, and one more weird thing, and then I'll let us continue. Uh, so where we're moving, we just noticed, I don't know, a couple weeks ago, that there's um, signs when you head out into our area that say to watch out for bears. <laughs> and then, like, the closer you get to our house, there's, like, bear crossings, like, you know, for the next two miles or whatever. I'm like, we live like two miles from here. Like bears in Florida? It just feels very strange. Well, it's nice. <laughs> yeah, I guess. You know. Are like, we going to, like. I don't know. I, I didn't know that. I'm not pretending like I knew that Florida was a bear <laughs> haven. I knew they had yeah, them in Massachusetts. Like, so... Yeah. And the, I mean, I've seen I've seen one in Washington before. Um, I mean, I've seen seen them a few times, but one time when I was out hiking, I've seen one before. But like now, I'm thinking: so when we get a pool, do we have to worry about you know spiders, turtles, bears? Uh, you know, maybe an alligator getting in there. Now maybe a, a bear like chilling in the pool. <laughs> well, I live in Michigan, where I would think that it would be a little uh, more woody. And whatnot, mm-hmm. you know, and I would I would have a higher expectation for bear encounters and bears don't even cross my mind. <laughs> You're talking about huh. you got bears miles away from you. I'm like, huh, I, mean, I see nothing but woods and fields and trees and, you know, just like outdoorsy stuff. Yeah. And I'm like, yeah, there's no bears around here. So they definitely. like. Yeah. In our neighborhood, there. in our neighborhood, there's, you know, houses getting built. So but there's still a lot of trees, but across. um the highway from us so we're you know maybe less than a mile from the highway but it's like so far up it's like you know not a lot of traffic yet um but on the other side of the highway it's all um what is it green greenland so it's all just trees and marshes you mean the and... everglades no the everglades is uh, way south way south okay yeah you don't have yeah, like but... patches of that up higher or is that yeah yeah, but the Everglades is like a a park area. That's so. the park. But, yeah, but it's, yep. th- th- I mean, I only drove through it once and I was 16. So that was a really long time ago. But I don't remember it being really wooded. Like it okay. was more like marshlands and gotcha. like So this tall is more woods. More woods stuff. than marsh. Yeah. It's yeah. It's like uh, all pine trees. And. Oh, that'll make for some big um, spiders. Yeah. Yeah, so ours is cut, our trees are cut pretty far back, so hopefully we won't get too many in the house, but anyway. For Rick, so, for Rick. I feel yeah. bad for Rick with his spiders. What about me? 
Uh, you can, you'll be fine. I'm getting better. <laughs> but, <laughs> Somebody's got to be the strong one in the spider brigade. <laughs> I know, it's got to be him. <laughs> I still remember his creativity of the, of the toilet paper roll. That was the best. Uh, oh, yeah, he's lucky I didn't see that. So He just told me about it. First up, speaking of scary things, we have... Ooh. Dracula. Dracula, or commonly known as an ant. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, uh, I forgot to mention this. I saw this from Craig. Uh, we have panthers instead of bears. So there is that. And that's a real thing. We have big cats here. Yeah. Right around us. Like, not just up in Michigan. Like, they live in this area. So, um, yeah, thanks for reminding me of that. Um, an ant. Did we talk about this before? Did we look at this ant face before? We were discussing that. So community, you got to let us know if we're repeating a story. Yeah. But this is the horrifying. I don't think it's horrifying. I think it's cool looking. But yeah, I think it looks like some of the pictures of Dracula that, you know, maybe like a little bit of Bram Stoker's Dracula in there and... Um. You know, when his face gets all bat-like. Yeah. I was just looking. I was thinking, you could use, like, do they do that? Is that how they come up with aliens? Do they just, like, go and zoom in on insects' faces? And then kind of, like, creative art it. Well, I think. <laughs> Is that kind of interesting? I mean, I was just yeah. thinking through all the insects' faces, like, close. <laughs> like, you would have your praying mantis. He's got a cool face. Spiders, you know, for instance. Yeah, That's one we see crazy. often. Yeah. Um, an ant. I've never seen an ant like this. But uh, what else no. is there? Flies. Ooh. Well, we already had the fly. Yep. Yeah, I don't know. But this is a zoomed in photo of an ant. Uh, let's see. What do we got? Creepy crawlies with a menacing bite can trigger an insatiable itch. Ants are the stuff of nightmares for many people. Uh, I don't know. I've never really heard people use that term for ants. No. <laughs> not, yeah, not the stuff of nightmares. Not Well, now maybe. but A close-up image of one of these pint-sized terrorists from Nikon Small World Photo Microphy. I don't know. Competition. Micro... Micrography, photo micrography. Oh, I want to say it like that, but I know, <laughs> I know it's not graphy just like that, right? Photography, oh. micro photography, pho photo micro. Oh, yeah, it's got to be graphy. I don't know. I want to hear somebody that's in that competition pronounce that for them yep. on the loudspeaker and adds what they're at. Welcome to Nikon Small World. But. <laughs> is eliciting horrifying response that spread across the internet like venom through the lymphatic system. Wow, this like is... Like venom. <laughs> yeah. I was like, man, they were really pulling out some words. There's not much to write about if you're thinking yeah. about it. You're like, They're I gotta like, here's write... Here's a picture. <laughs> yeah, here's a picture of an ant. It's kind of scary. Um, you're talking about the eyes look demon-like and insects razor-sharp teeth. Built to pierce the victim's flesh with a single bite. Yeah. I'm being pierced. I got bit by ants last night. Really? Yeah. We were moving things from the shed, and I was like, all of a sudden, just kept getting these little bites. So I had to take my shoe off. <laughs> yep. It was horrifying. <laughs> it wasn't bad. <laughs> Luckily, it wasn't the red ants. It was just a little, little. Yeah. We're gonna have yeah. to bookmark this because they had <laughs> other they have other pictures. Um include a tiger beetle devouring a fly, a hulking blo blob of slime, a psychedelic image of a stained dinosaur bone. I was like, we should just look at pictures. <laughs> like what we, we used to do for crypto. <laughs> for yeah. Like, we wanna see more. <laughs> But the 
Uh, entomologists have documented ants morphing into zombies, which we've talked about before, um, after coming into contact with mind-controlling parasites, vomiting into each other's mouths to form social bonds, and queens willingly sacrificing themselves as a way to retain the throne. I forgot yeah. how many ants they said are on the planet. It's an insane number. I'll look. Ants are cool. I like ants. I've always been a fan of them. I've even thought uh, about... Oh. 20 quadrillion. <laughs> Did you just make that up? No, I know you no. looked it up. It says Somebody made it up and posted it as a fish. <laughs> They're like, who, who, who counts how many ants are out there? Yeah, well, it's a conservative estimate. I'm sure. And it says uh, 20 quadrillion is 20,000 million millions. Yeah, just too many. That's a lot. Mm -hmm. Yep, that's interesting. I, I was I was saying, I, I was thinking even of recently in the last couple of years, I wanted an ant farm, like a real ant farm. Not just a little kid one, because they, they got some pretty cool ones where you can do some pretty cool stuff. Like you should come move into this house. <laughs> <laughs> You're like, I think, it's I free. think the, yeah, they're we're definitely farming ants here. <laughs> you can't go very far. And if you're smart or not smart enough and you make a cake and you don't seal it up well, then you'll have ants in your house too. So yeah. Easy peasy. Uh, there's a chance I may lose internet. It's like crazy windy here. No. We have gale warnings. Okay. <laughs> Next up. Hey, do you want to get coffee real quick? No. Okay. We're going to do... Next up. We're going to do this the article. Brown yes. Okay. We're going to do this one. I, I was trying to get through the animals, but we can still stop Okay, before. we can do that then. I'm just thirsty. Yeah, so am I. I've been staring at it, too. <laughs> I was going to try to do it, like, um, like just do a quick run. But I was like, no. Keep going. Push strong. We can Stay do strong. it. All right. The scary spider, brown recluses. We haven't talked about them. They are very common around here. Uh, are they gross? Oh yeah, 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 yeah. Like super, super common. You don't want to mess with these things. Mm -mm. Um, very bad. Avoid getting bitten. Let's see how we do that. The brown recluse is no well known for its venomous bite. It is the most common and widespread of the brown spiders, but is usually found only in what? No. Usually. Back me up, Craig, Patricia. I know you're in this area. Well, I know they're in Washington too. So How I think common. they're everywhere. We're talking about common. If we're going to go with one out of 20, or how many out of 20 spiders that we encounter? I'm going to go. I mean, I know 20 and you divide it down, and it would end up being a smaller fraction, but I'm going to go like out of every five out of, yeah, five out of 20. I mean, that yeah, common. Like, yeah, yeah, that's what I mean. I, I like, I swear, I want to go higher. I'll go 50%. But I know there's a bunch of little ones that I just am discounting because they don't matter. But, um, <laughs> that, no, I swear these little tunnel things, I see them all the time. And I know there's like the wolf spider that's kind of close to looking like it, but you don't see right. them that much. <clears throat> we'll have to. I'll have Maybe to see. you just have an infestation. <laughs> an infestation? No, <laughs> no, no. No, but um, people bitten by brown recluse spiders should ice the wound and seek emergency medical treatment. I don't ever see them inside. That's good advice. That's the thing. I always see them outside. I don't ever see them inside. Like it's always well, the little guys good. inside. But... <laughs> you just treat them as a regular spider. That's exactly it. I, I like that's the thing. Um, uh, Darcy, look to see what their homes look like. If they're like little tunnely guys. Okay. Like they, they do a web and it's like kind of like, and then there's a tunnel at the back of it. Um, brown recluse bites can cause necro, necro rotic, skin rotting lesions. 
Necrotic. And necrotic. Yeah, there you go. Necrotic. That looks a lot better. When you break it up differently, it's kind of funny. Yeah, I know. It's like, wait a second. Uh, um, and lead to serious reactions or even death in some people. Yeah, I know. I've never heard of anybody dying, but yeah. I'm like having away. a hard time looking for a picture, but yeah, so it's bad. what you said. Yeah. Yeah, it's disgusting. I can't look. It's like a, it's a tunnel of death. And it's yeah, the reason I know about it is because I tease them all the time. Because <laughs> you can, you, yeah, because you can lure them out of the hole if you do like a bug, like a bug thing on the end of their web, and then, um, then they run back in. They're quick. They run in fast. They go back, and then you, you're not getting them out of wherever they go. So yeah, uh, brown recluse spiders are native to a region. To a region comprising of Kansas, Oklahoma, whoever wrote, oh, okay, I see us now, Texas, Louisiana, Arkansas, Missouri, Mississippi, Alabama, parts of Georgia, Tennessee, Kentucky, Ohio, and Illinois, Indiana, Iowa, Nebraska, just say like the whole United States, they're yeah. everywhere, so. oh yeah, and then, yeah, I gotta show this picture, this is the best, they have their own nation, <laughs> um, what is that called, the city state? <laughs> called reclusa <laughs> don't go there <laughs> yeah and i think it's much larger than that <sighs> yeah gross what are these other spiders these other spiders haven't taken over deserta this is funny all right so there's our ground recluse um, education. Couple minute break. We're gonna go a little longer than two. Let's go four. Oh, oh okay. Let's or are it. we just gonna do a quick refresh? Ooh, then did 20 you scroll minutes? down? There's uh. I don't want to scroll owies. down. I'm already like not liking this article because I know it's making me feel sick too. But you know how I don't like or I like spiders and then owies. Yeah, yeah. we got keep going, keep going. This thing does keep going. I stopped. More? I, when I saw a reclusa, I was like, yeah. That's close enough. That's far enough. Yeah, no, keep going. Keep going. Oh, yeah, there's lots of pictures. Oh. There. Yeah, that's what Before. I expected. That's exactly what I expected. No, I'm not showing the audience that. I'm going to save you. Um, I'm going to go and I got to update all our links for our last couple of videos. If you're curious about seeing the bite, I'm sure you can Google it. Or you can come to our video and the link will be in here. Um, yeah. It's not pleasant. I, I don't. I don't yeah. like looking. You'll. You'll almost never see us looking at sores or things like yeah, that. That's. That that's gross. not my thing. Um, so. No, I'm sad that I. I picked this article. <laughs> no, I'm happy. I learned about <laughs> reclusa. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't know they had a nation. That's nope. the best. They do. All right. Uh, now we're down to a two minute break. So. Oh, shoot. Let's do four. Okay, back to four. Yeah, All we right. can do it. It looks like uh, Craig's starting up. I'm going to go on this heist for us. Um, okay. ST and then. How many beans? I don't know. I don't know how many we have. Um, what was it? Uh, yeah. What do you got? I'm going to go 200. We're going big. Whoa. Hello. All right. Let's see if Good I join. I want to make sure. All. And then I'm going to go. Yep. Oh, yep. Oh, did it work? No. There we go. Yep. Cool. All right. I'll see you in a few. I'm going to fix right. this thing real quick. If I can fix it. Fix it. <laughs> Does that work? You just keep saying fix it? <laughs> There we go. I found where it's at. Perfect. Four minutes. Oh, exclamation point, Patricia. You did an I.
When does four minutes over end? No timer. So when does four minutes end? There's always so many things to work on. <laughs> it's a never ending. Thing. So I think we're going to skip over our next two and just get into it. But I think we lost our 200 beans. We died. It didn't say we went us, but only Patricia and Craig got beans. So. Oh no! What the heck? Rude. We gotta get busy on our Web three stuff. <laughs> I'm hanging with Dave. We're hanging with Davey. That's what Craig says. <laughs> yep, that's exactly it. Um, for the people that followed our crypto corner channel. Um, over the last couple days, week, I would say that somebody injected about $80 billion into the crypto market. Oh, mm -hmm. so that's a lot. So things are a lot more green in the last few days. It's interesting. And, it, I, but it's, it's maybe around the hype of Elon buying Twitter. Mm -hmm. Because they think they're going to integrate Dogecoin with it. And this was around five cents. But remember how we were hoping for a cheaper polygon? Look. Yeah. Dollar nineteen. Yeah, we missed we missed that. <laughs> and we were complaining at 70 cents. That's so yeah. funny. So yeah. Well the wait. Sorry. I, the dogs, I don't know if you can hear them, but they're ah. playing. Yeah. Okay. If you hear any heavy breathing, it's just the dogs playing. I swear. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's go on to ooh, ooh. our main story. It's, it's like not, I don't know. It's bright. It's bright. Oh, they have a VR simulation where you can experience an atomic bomb. Yeah. Yeah, I saw the simulation. Oh, thanks. Yeah, it was weird. Weird. At the site is it I wonder if it's like at the science museum where you can um experience uh hurricane level winds, but it's like that only hot. Yeah, well <laughs> there would be no hot. You would have to fake that. No, it's just the visual. Yeah. Well, I just mean like like some like Oh, you're saying in real icky. life? No. Oh, oh, oh. No, just like a, like that it's just warmer. Experience. So you could do that. You're saying the same machine, just warmer. So that's yeah. it. Close your <laughs> exactly. eyes. Or a bright light. You wouldn't have to close your eyes. All right. We have the Manhattan that's... Project. What were you going to say? Oh, the um, the Indiana Jones. What was it? The, the, maybe the last one where he escaped the nuclear blast by hopping into a fridge. Getting thrown like, you know, a couple miles and you survived. I don't remember that. Yeah. That was in well, the Crystal Skulls one. I I feel like that was in the beginning of it. And that's what happened in yeah. the beginning. A nuclear yeah. bomb went off. Yeah, he was in that. Li he was trying to escape, and he was in that town that had like all the mannequins and stuff. And then he was like, then he realized that there. They were going to be blown the place, so he hopped into a. I hope I'm not mixing up movies. He hopped into a refrigerator, and then he just ended up like, you know, really far away. I mean, of course, everything he would that was the only thing that blew up that far away, and it just happened to have him in it, and he survived, like any ninety year old man would. <laughs> you know, all you need to do is hop into a refrigerator. Hope that the door blows off when you land, but not before. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, there's another movie where they... Oh, that was not good where we're standing. Um, there's another one where... What is that one? Where he jumps into the hole? With the snakes? 
No, he's in the movie? hole. He's a prisoner in the hole. And then somebody else goes down in the hole. Maybe it's a superhero movie. I don't know. <clears throat> but We made more information. Yeah, <laughs> I don't know. They're in Japan. And the bomb goes off. And it burns the one guy's face. And then, like, the movie's about him... Oh, no, that's uh, Wolverine. Oh, is that Wolverine? That's the bad yep. guy? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yep, yep. Yeah, yeah, because yeah, he Jackman. wants his yeah, yeah, power, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. See? I don't remember the movies. See, Something you did like a good that. job. Yeah, I did good enough. You burned <laughs> his face. I'm like, ah, I know what it is. <laughs> yeah, that's a pretty good one. It was, but it's just funny. It's like Jeffrey, Jeffrey playing movies. Let's, let's have Jeffrey describe the movies. <laughs> That's great. That's great. But the atom bombs, the first atom bomb, I can just read this screen. <laughs> there you go. First atomic bomb was built in Los Alamos, New Mexico during World War II under a top secret U.S. government program called the Manhattan Project. So why is it called the Manhattan Project if it was in New Mexico? Throw Los- them off the target. <laughs> 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 That's so funny. We'll find out in a minute. Los Alamos was approved as the site for the main atomic bomb scientific laboratory on November 25th, 1942 by Brigadier General Leslie R. Groves and physicist J. Robert Oppenheimer. Oh, Oppenheimer. Heard that name. Yep. And if we were real scientists in a real lab, then we would know who he was. <laughs> Yes, yeah, we'd have more information. Just, you know, I've heard that in movies and stuff. Yep. yep. Code name, Trin- the first test, uh, bomb cutaways. Yeah, I don't need to read about the other part. And let's go back to my other page. So, wait. So, it. when did it say it? It was approved in 19... 19- November 25th, 1942. And then they used it in Nagasaki August 9th, 1945. Holy smokes. Yeah, oh, Hiroshima, took... August 6th. That's insane. No, it took three years to build. Oh, that's horrifying. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. So, but it started before then, right? Because you have to get scientists to build it. Mm-hmm. American scientists, many of them refugees from fascist regimes in Europe, took steps in 1939 to organize a project to exploit the newly recognized fission process for military purposes. The first contact with the government was made by G.B. Pengram, Pegram, Pegram, Pegram. I don't know, of Columbia University, who arranged a conference between Enrico Fermi and the Navy Department in March 1939. In the summer of 1939, Albert Einstein was persuaded by his fellow scientists to use his influence and present the military potential of an uncontrolled fission chain reaction to President Franklin D. Roosevelt. In February 1940, $6,000 was made available to start research under the supervision of a committee headed by L.J. Briggs, director of the National Bureau of Standards. And then on December 6, 1941, the project was put under the direction of the Office of Scientific Research Development, headed by Vannevar Vannevar. Vannevar Bush. Really? Can you look can you look to see if Vannevar Bush is related to the main Bush family? <laughs> yes, I would love to. That is insane. Yeah. <clears throat> After the US entry into World War II, the War Department was given joint responsibility for the project because By mid-1940, it was obvious that a vast array of pilot plants, laboratories, and manufacturing facilities would have to be constructed by the U.S. Army Corps of Engineers so that the assembled scientists could carry out their mission. 
In June 1942, the Corps of Engineers Manhattan District was initially assigned management of construction. There you go. Because much of the early research had been performed at Columbia University in Manhattan. And in September 1942, Brig General Leslie R. Groves was placed in charge of all Army activities, chiefly engineering activities relating to the project. Manhattan Project became the code name for research work that would extend across the country. Uh oh, I need to sneeze. Huh? Uh, I needed to sneeze. Um, it looks like probably not. Probably not. But, you know, yeah, um, it, the, the closest I could find is it's possible that they're distant cousins, but yeah, no, not a name enough. like Bush. It's, it's not, uh, not the connection I was looking for. Yeah. No. I was like, yeah, that was like the cousin, you know, <laughs> or uncle, you know, just something like really direct, not a brother or sister or father. Yeah. I was expecting a cousin or an uncle. But no, not like fifth relation, just happen to know him. So this is Leslie R. I forget. I already forgot the name. Gross. I'm going to call him by his proper official name. Um, Brigadier General <laughs> Gross. <laughs> Leslie R. Gross. So. <clears throat> I think that's a pretty important name and you earned it whether you're, you were a nice person or not, but I'm not making judgment. Um, what do we got next? Oh, I can't see that. Oh, it says, uh, uh, is this, did you say where they got the name? It says in June, 1942, the Corps of engineers, Manhattan district was initially assigned management of the construction work. Uh, because, much of the early research had been performed at Columbia University in Manhattan. Um, so Manhattan Project became the code name for research work. Did you say that already? I did. I just reread it. You did. Dang, why didn't you say? Because I, I was asked, letting you read it. Then, oh, what a turd. You were doing a good job. <laughs> and maybe somebody missed it because it was, it's like literally the most important part. Right? How do you come yeah. up with the name Manhattan Project? And yeah. it was done in Los Alamos. Because I, I always thought that. I was I thought it was weird. But then I was like, well, they maybe built a nuclear bomb. or, or I, That's why I thought it was like a nuclear reactor in Manhattan. Like a bomb in Manhattan wouldn't have made any sense. Like, no. like even even crazy U.S. government stuff. It's like. They're not like they're not gonna do that. <laughs> <laughs> like, like that's that's really good. But even having a nuclear reactor in somebody's basement, because I forget where the they got one somewhere that uh, is an old one that they can't take out. Um, but uh, you know, it's not that. I mean, it's the same level, but not the same. I mean, yeah. But I do remember seeing the old videos of them testing it. It was always out in the desert. Well, yeah, and I thought. Yeah, I just thought it was like, oh, this is a cool name. Like they had a Cisco that just came up with like this yeah. cool name. But but fancy old Columbia University never made the bomb, or at least got the great minds together. Um, it was known in 1940 that the German scientists were working on a similar project, and that the British were also exploring the problem. It's not a problem. It was never a problem. Yeah, the uh, and, problem of being able to blow up a whole bunch of people all at once. Because <laughs> that is, I mean, we do want to make the distinct. They took the fission research and decided they wanted to make it for the military, which isn't uncommon, yeah. but I'm just like, this is a conscious. It's not like they accidentally stumbled across this. They decided, hey, let's militarize this. Figure out how we can kind of control it and do something. Yeah, and and other people were too, and you can't fall behind. I mean, I get it. Yeah. At the same time, it's it's tricky. Maybe we're all super safe because of this exact thing. But it's in, it's interesting, right? And then and then we ban other countries from being able to do it. That's my favorite part. Yeah. 
<laughs> like, does it really matter? I mean, I guess because it's the fact that they're unhinged, uh, you know, in theory or whatever. We say they're unhinged. Um, yep. But it's just, it's kind of funny that, uh, yeah, we say no, no, not we have them, but you can't have them now. So then we combined um, policy committee with Great Britain and Canada in 1943. Yeah, we should cooperate, especially if you're building this type of stuff. If the project was to achieve success quickly, several lines of research and development had to be carried on simultaneously before it was certain whether any might succeed. The explosive materials then had to be produced and be made suitable for use in an actual weapon. Uranium-235, the essential fissionable component of the postulated bomb, cannot be separated from its natural companion to much more abundant uranium-238. Okay, so a bunch of uranium. Um, chemical stuff, atoms, blah, 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 physical methods, and they figured out how to separate stuff. <laughs> Eek. I mean, if we'll, we'll we'll ask the chat. Do you want me to go into the details of how you um how they researched um building the bomb? We're gonna gloss over it. I'm think. curious how many of these people died from uh, radiation. Oh, it's insane! It's horrible! It's just so horrible! It's, it's the it's I, I don't know. I like it doesn't get put into the category of leaders that had people killed under them, you know, like famous yeah. um, warlords and I don't know what dictators, stuff like that. Right. It never gets talked about in that same way. And yeah, I don't, I'm, I'm sad to even like, I don't even want to look up the number cause I know it'll win. Like I think, yeah. and there's no way you can even calculate it. Because just like what you said, radiation, just long-term results, it's just insane. And so then how do we not, as a country, get put into that category? And that particular leader, Roosevelt, at that time that made the call. You know what I mean? Yep. It's kind of, it's interesting um, why, oh, I mean, history I mean, will be judged by future people eventually. Um, it's just interesting. Because we're still even fresh. You're only talking like, what? 70 years ago. Mm -hmm. so, not as, 75 years ago. It's not very long. It's not very long at all. You still have generations of people here on this earth that lived at that time. Yep. Um, by the time the original six thousand, that cracks me up. The project have grown to 2 billion. Yeah. So it started with six. That I just need six K. <laughs> it yeah. was like $2 billion. That's how they get you. That made That's That makes say. sense. Right. I mean, the mm -hmm. 6000 seemed a little low, but yeah, $2 billion, especially at that time. That's an insane amount. So they didn't spare any expense. Uh, which exploded July 16th. Uh, air base. So the first one blew up in New Mexico, Albuquerque, New Mexico. It was detonated on top of a steel tower <laughs> surrounded by scientific equipment. <laughs> Did that stuff even get a reading? Yeah. Like, they, I'm sure they didn't know what they're about. To, like, yeah. Think, no. I mean, that I'm sure they had a good a good guess, but I mean, they're only 120 miles away from Al what? Albuquerque. Yeah. It's only that's not that far. <laughs> no, it's not. It's this not should be enough. far enough. <laughs> that's exactly. That's why you don't you don't let boys play with explosives, like yeah. like like that, there should have been some more women involved in this project, <laughs> <laughs> right? I mean seriously, like guys typically uh, don't think about things very well when it comes to shiny explodey things. I don't know. I, I, I do. Am I am I off on that? What no. Does everybody think? I think it, uh, I, I'm sure you're right. <laughs> Although at this level, I mean, when you're talking about this kind of stuff, I don't, it's the same. I don't it's the same. really trust anybody. <laughs> oh, you thought a woman was behind the project. 
I haven't seen a woman's name yet. Just Leslie, unless you're talking about Les <laughs> Brigadier General <laughs> Leslie. <laughs> and I'm sure that he, I don't know if he's still alive. Madam something? Madam Tussaud? Madam Tussauds? Like Wax Museum, right? What is that? Looking. Um, or uh, is that like a, a madam? Ooh. Uh, the explosion came as an intense flash, sudden wave of hate, heat, a ball of fire. We all know what that is. Completely vaporized everything. Yep. No. Oh, the following month is when they actually used them. In Hiroshima and Nagasaki. The only thing about that is at least it ended the war. Everybody was like, yeah, we're done. What is this? Them watching it? Them getting ready to do it? I don't know what this is. <laughs> Hopefully that's not them watching it. <laughs> They're underground with it. It says, uh. The most famous woman who worked on the Manhattan Project was Maria uh, Geopart Mayer, who later won the Nobel Prize for Physics in her work in developing the theory of nuclear shell structure. Um, but it says most women worked as nurses, teachers, librarians, and secretaries. Um, oh, no, I got that other picture here. Huh, so yeah, yeah. Oh, oh, it's this one. First self-sustaining nuclear chain reaction. Uh, let's see, the only method was available for production of the fissionable material, plutonium-239. It was developed at a metallurgy laboratory of the University of Chicago under the direction of Arthur Holly Compton. It involves the transmutation in a reactor pile of 238 in December. Fermi finally succeeded in producing a controlled and controlling a fission chain reaction in this reactor pile at Chicago. Well, Chicago had a nuclear reactor in it. Yikes. <laughs> Where they were trying to figure <laughs> out stuff. That would suck if you were on the campus and you just... Uh, you're getting radiation poisoning. Yeah. Yeah, right. Oh, they That's just had a enough. lab problem where this poor girl got, uh, she got something, something happened to her uh, in, a, in a university. At least I saw the headline, um, a university accident recently, like in the last week or so. I was like, man, I'm surprised. I just thought I'm surprised that doesn't happen more often, and I'm glad it doesn't, but. You know, they do follow the best to their abilities, safety stuff most of the time. Yeah. Uh, quickly, mm -hmm. um, Madame Curie never worked on the Manhattan Project, but her contributions to the study of urani um, radium and radiation were instrumental to the future development of the atomic bomb. So you were kind of correct, Craig. Madame Curie. Right that's who Madame it is. Madame Curie. Heard that I name just didn't, before. I, yeah. <laughs> I just wanted to, you know, let Craig know that he was... He was on to something. On, he was on to something. Yeah. For that... You're welcome. I think it's time for a break and a heist. I'll start it. Yeah. Yeah, don't... Let's not lose all of our beans this time. How much do we do? We only got like... We got like 200 and some now. Yeah. Let's do 75. That's what I was going to say. But then I was like, maybe that's too low. <laughs> maybe that's too low. <laughs> All of the beans. No. All right. <laughs> and we'll go back to a two-minute break. I did figure out how to edit it. Double click on okay. this right here. I need a timer. Let me get that going. Yeah, because it'll just be two minutes forever. Yeah, that's why I said, how do you know when two minutes is up? Like, somebody coming in, like, at a minute 59 is like, oh, I'll come back. Well, we can just change it to the time. We'll be back at X time. <laughs> I don't like that, but that's so smart. <laughs> yeah, it only took me, like, how many of these to figure, to suggest it. <laughs> All right, let's refresh. We'll be back.
two minutes. music. Oh. Very silent breaks. You got you forced into now. Really too bad. I'm back. We made him listen to a silent break. How did no. our thing go? Oh, let's see results. Pretend new program. Hey, we sur everybody survived. Nice. That's nice to hear. Oh, That's our nice. leader is now Patricia. Craig, oh, Craig's almost got us. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Just don't do those slots. You do those slots. Oh, there's another one. Um, Let's see. I forget. Uh, oh, I closed it. It's like dual. Um, oops. Now we got 15 minutes. Modules. So we also have one that I have noticed that nobody's playing. So we got highest gamble. Allow viewers to gamble with their loyalty points by rolling a hundred sided die. I don't know what that means, but do <laughs> exclamation point gamble your point space points. <laughs> just gamble. <laughs> I'm just gonna gamble my points away. Where 
Yep, there we go. Rolled 33, lost 50 beans, and now has 225. <laughs> What's up? I don't know. Let's try ours. We're gonna, we'll, we'll match you. Of course. That's why Patricia has hers. She doesn't. She doesn't play slots. Oh, yeah, I lost mine. So then the other one is dual. So let's see. So I think you just need to do the same thing with the exclamation dual, and then the, let's try to do the same points. I don't know. No, do less. Do forty. Or not. I know there's a delay. It's funny. I know, right? I uh when I was watching you and Natalia, that was one thing that was hard for me is I would like say something. I'm like, oh wait, you guys because of the delay. <laughs> and then even noticing it, right? Yep, and then that too. Well, that didn't seem to do much. Oh, Oh, I got to look at the screen. It tells me how to do it. All right, so let's do this. Uh, dual. You got to do the username and then the points. So I'll probably ask you if you want to. Well, we'll see if it finds it. Yep, there it goes. So you do exclamation accept or exclamation deny if you don't want to duel. There you go. Uh-oh. Now we're in trouble. All right. We got the game going. Word. Craig won the duel and won 50 points. What? Feels good, man. What? Rude. Flex. Uh... <laughs> All right. Well, you can't do anything horrible without some spies. All right. Nice. Spies were part of this program. And here is the first spy we have. Which side were they on? I think they were on our side, but we'll see. All the sides? Oh. All the sides. Yeah, they probably <laughs> just they're putting like their side, they were on their own. <laughs> All right, see you later, Patricia. No. Okay. <laughs> uh John Carncross worked as a private secretary to Sir Maurice Hankey. Ooh. A high-ranking British official involved with tube alloys. The secret British atomic program. Oh, theirs was called Two Alloys. Um, yeah, atomic... we definitely had a Cisco. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. They're like, they had we one of us. <laughs> tube alloys. It was probably just like made in a tube and it was out of metal. So they're like, oh, tube alloys. There you go. I got the perfect name. <laughs> Manhattan Project, that sounds so much more sexy. Yeah, it totally is. <laughs> In this position, he gave Moscow a list. Oh, no. Whoa. Whoa. Oh. Gave Moscow a list of, Amer of American atomic scientists and may have leaked information about a report evaluating Britain's prospects of building a uranium bomb in 1941 after he was interrogated by MI5. In the 1960s, he confessed to being a Soviet spy. Ooh, this wasn't what? one on our side. Mm. A mole? A mole. Yeah, he would be a mole. We'll, we'll go spies are ours. And yeah, he was a mole. Yeah. <laughs> That's cool. I mean, I, I always find it fascinating when you're like super secretive and you get away with it. Well, he didn't, but. <laughs> no, yeah, he totally didn't. <laughs> He was um, interrogated. Ooh, that sounds bad. In the 60s. And he was part of the infamous spy group. 
who met at Cambridge University in the 1930s. He died in 1995. <laughs> okay. In England still. <laughs> That's funny. Never got kicked out. Uh, the Soviet. Ooh, we got Melita. Now I got to switch back over. Let's see. This chicky chick. Look at her. Nobody would have suspected her, Melita Norwood. Yeah, I, I wish they would show pictures of what they look like when they were doing most of this stuff. I'm curious. Oh, the nowadays, or the back then pictures? Yeah. Well, they were spies, so they don't have pictures of them. <laughs> ah. Mm -hmm. Excellent. Yeah, I know. I'm sure they have plenty. <laughs> There's, like, pictures of them, like, gathering secrets. <laughs> <laughs> That's exactly what I meant. When I said that. <laughs> There's pictures of them just sitting at tables. Yeah. Now, you know, it just looks like them meeting in a library. You're like, hmm. yeah. but no, you have this provocative 87 year old Melita Norwood stands outside her home yelling at people, go away! <laughs> I know your secrets. <laughs> <laughs> Soviet That's Union's longest serving spy in Britain. Norwood worked as a secretary for a director of the Tube Alloys Project. <laughs> oh, for a director, not the director. While living an apparent normal life in the Lond London suburbs, she passed information to Soviet agents throughout the war and into the 1970s. It is unclear how much Norwood's espionage helped the Soviet atomic program, but she was officially honored for her work when she visited Moscow in 1979. Finally exposed as a spy in the 1990s, Norwood cheerfully admitted what she had done and she and said she would do it again. Yowza. Huh? That, um, so not only did Britain not do a very good job <laughs> with the name, <laughs> but they had two spies. <laughs> All right. Well, let's see how many more we can cover in a few minutes. Yeah. They're like, man, we just... Uh, uh, um. <laughs> Oh, okay. I'm just gonna scan real quick. Let's see. Scroll down. Let's see. Uh, uh, Sorry, Bert. That's us. Yeah, it's just the first two. It looks like. And then it's us. It looks like it's a mix of us and us getting some, maybe. Um. Yeah. So yeah, Britain. Britain's first two didn't do so well, but I'm sure there is many others that were very successful that never got caught. Well, yep. she didn't get caught. She just freaking was like, I'm like super old now. And well, I'm going to go. She was exposed. Well, let's go back. Finally exposed as a spy in the 1990s. I guess. Okay. Okay. Exposed. She didn't come out and say it. Yep. You're right. But she was like, heck yeah, I was. Yeah. And then she now was get like, off my yeah. lawn. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> You're like, eh. She's like, what are you going to do about it now? And she, yeah. really, she was finally like. Finally, people will take me seriously and leave me alone. Cool. <laughs> uh, and then we got Flooch. Flooch. Klaus Flooch. Where's the L? Are you just putting it in there because you don't want to say... Flooch. Fooch. 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 I think it's Fooks. Fooks. I don't know where I was getting an L. I wasn't trying to put <laughs> was an like, L in there. Are you, are you just trying not to say it because it sounds like a cuss word? Oh, Fox? Yeah. Oh, is that Oops. his name? Maybe that is his name, yeah. Fox. Yeah. <laughs> Fox. <laughs> he, he fled to England amid the rise of Nazism in the 1933. Yeah. Anybody that would be able to probably tried to. Like, they were like, fuck yeah. this shit. That's fair. Yep. Good job. And became a British citizen. And <laughs> yeah. Oh, you need Britain. to change the picture. Oh, yeah, yeah. We got we to gotta get Fox up there. It's being weird. Um, yeah, yeah, yep. Yeah. So then he's and he had already offered to spy for the Soviet. Whoa, 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 wait, 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 wait a second. Now I'm confused. So he's German. He didn't like the Nazis. He became British citizen in 1942. He had already offered to spy for the Soviets. Well, oh. it said he fled amid the rise of Nazism. It didn't say he fled the Nazis. He's just like, I'm fleeing. I'm By the fleeing. way, I'll, fight. I'll just be over here. So if you guys want any secrets, just uh, hit me up. Here's my 
Here's my address. <laughs> he joined a group of British scientists who travels to Los Alamos. Oh no, for the Manhattan Project and later passed key information. Uh, so it's like shame on us and Britain. Yeah. Uh, but he, he he came under the Britain flag, so then yeah, you know we were like, oh, you guys say he's cool. Okay, we'll let him in. <laughs> yeah, fucks fucked us. Yeah. Oh wait, that, now I'm cussing. Dang. Great. Now we're getting demonetized. <laughs> I think you can cuss. It's it's weird. Yeah. I don't know. We're uh, we're not monetized anyway. <laughs> <laughs> but we got named. Did I did you try it? You can yeah. find us at youtube.com slash at pretending to program. Oh yeah. We got a real name you now. Me- That's awesome. Nice. That's exciting. Mm-hmm. They handed them out. Like all my channels got them. <laughs> except for except for like pretending to crypto because we didn't go on it or something. All right, next up we got, um, well, we're going to skip because it's 930. So let's see what do we got. We got our other famous people. <laughs> <laughs> we know that picture. What was Mr. Einstein's role in all of this? Uh, we talked about it in the last article. He was the one that, like, he was pressured to talk to Roosevelt. Do you think okay, he wanted to? Well, if he had to get pressured, I mean, I don't know. Here, I get the the one that's the Einstein article after the spies. Um, he wrote a letter. Okay, let's see. Yeah, 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 here we go. When Einstein learned that the Germans might succeed in solving problems that I didn't read the first article <laughs> in, 19, yeah. in the first part. In 1938, three chemists working in a laboratory in Berlin made a discovery that would alter the course of history. Ah, they split the uranium atom. The energy released when the splitting or fission occurs is tremendous enough to power a bomb. But before such a weapon could be built, numerous technical problems had to be overcome. Could you imagine being one of those three chemists and seven years later, you're this thing that you did kills so many people. I can't even imagine. What it depends that on like. point of view. Well, I, they're they weren't doing it to create a bomb, though. Yeah. Yep. That's why they I, just. I don't know. I wouldn't feel bad. I'd feel I like I wouldn't regret doing it or doing my research or following whatever. As a scientist, it is what it is. I mean, it depends on your motives, right? Yeah. When, uh, like the thing, like, uh, obviously some, a lot of people were working on it. So, but it's like when you make the conscious decision to make the military part of it. Well, know, no, like, I'm not talking about that part. I'm just talking about these three scientists. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. They did it. So I wouldn't feel bad for them. I mean, like yeah. if I was one of them, that's what I'm saying. I would feel indifferent. I'd be like, okay, that sucked. But, you know, it's interesting to see. Mm. Now, sad that the people died. I think anybody would, you know, well, a lot of people would feel bad, you know, just in general. That, like, that part is a separate thing. You know, you didn't want that to happen, but your research it was what it was. Yep. And then, yeah, so Einstein learned about that, and he's like, hey, President Roosevelt, you need to do something. <laughs> yeah. The, Br- the British over here, they can't name their project right. Yeah, they already got a couple spies. So. And they got these spies. <laughs> Tube alloys over here. Come on. Tube alloys. <laughs> it's like the boring company. But that one's funny. Um, two other findings and demonstrated conclusively that the bombs were feasible and made building a bomb a top priority of the United States. So that's what. So then he wrote this letter to the president, warned uh, to wrote to U.S. President. Franklin Roosevelt to warn him that the Nazis were working on a new and powerful weapons and an atomic bomb. Fellow physicist Leo Schislard urged Einstein to send the letter and helped him draft it. Um, in 1940, U.S. Army Intelligence Office denied Einstein the security clearance needed to work on the Manhattan Project. The hundreds of wow, the hundreds of scientists on the project were from forbidden from consulting with Einstein because the left-leaning political activist was deemed a potential security risk. 
Uh, if only they knew about Fuchs. <laughs> <laughs> Good old fucks. Yeah. Like we already have we already have enough security. <laughs> right? No, they're like, we got enough people. <laughs> Like, we don't need you. We got we got this guy over here. He's telling us all like don't don't include Einstein. Yeah, right. Uh, that's the best. Although he never worked directly on it, he is um, associated with the advent of nuclear weapons. His famous equation E equals M C squared explained the energy released in an atomic bomb, but doesn't explain how to build one. He repeated, re reminded people, I do not consider myself the father of the release of atomic energy. My part in it was quite indirect. Yes, I would agree. Nonetheless, mm -hmm. nevertheless, Einstein was frequently asked to explain his role as why, as he was when a Japanese magazine asked him, why do you cooperate in the production of atomic bombs, knowing full well their destructive power? Einstein's answer was always that his only act had been to write President Roosevelt suggesting the research atom to research uh, the atomic weapons before the Germans did it. I mean, now I, it's tricky, right? That one, that, that's where it's tricky. Right? You have this yeah. other country. Yeah, well, he says uh, he came to regret taking the, even this step in an interview. He said, had I known the Germans would not succeed in developing an atomic bomb, I would have done nothing. Yep. But you don't you don't know. That's the thing. I mean, yeah, you don't know. And we all I think we all agree the Nazis were pretty bad. Um yep. I think that's pretty well established. <laughs> and so then um yeah. So he didn't know what was gonna go. But it's interesting. It is interesting. And then and then we have what we have now. And it's still interesting. Scary. No. Yeah, I was going to say scary. It's just interesting. You're exactly right, scary. So that's it. That is the Manhattan Project in all its infamous glory. Glory? Glory. 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 I'm tired. What do we got? We got tiny houses coming up. Oh, and really mixing it up. Then new topics. Uh oh, hold on. We got new topics coming up. So we'll do tiny houses next week, right? Mm -hmm. And then that'll lead us into Thanksgiving time. So we'll do some Thanksgiving type topics, right? Fun. And then our first one after Thanksgiving until Christmas, we'll, we'll just do all holiday related stuff. Oh, uh, I can't wait. Holiday animals. What do you think? Holiday nature things. Like reindeers. I don't know. I don't know where. Ham. Yeah, exactly. Reindeer. <laughs> what else did you say? Ham. <laughs> well, there's yetis, right? Are they holiday? And there's elves. Oh, yeah. Elves, well, and they're not real. How do you know? <laughs> Have you been to the North Pole? No. You know who I've been hanging no. out with? Elves? Flat earthers. Really? <laughs> no. I was just saying that because, like, you don't know? Have you been to the edge of the world? <laughs> <laughs> like, no, because I've flown halfway around it, so there is no edge. It's yeah. funny. Like, I don't know. I don't. I don't think I've flown halfway around the world. Um, but yeah, so that's interesting. No, we'll talk about uh, probably myth a lot, a lot of mythological stuff, big stuff. But I don't know. We'll see. Holiday related things. We'll try to squeeze in as much as we can as the main topic. Um, we'll still probably cover our regular news stuff. Um, so check in on the web telescope, right? Haven't seen yeah, that. Yeah, we in a haven't while. done that in a while. That'll be fun. Mm, revisit. Oh, super rare. They're doing stuff. <laughs> oh, they are. Yeah. So we're gonna we're gonna reintegrate in our crypto time. So we'll probably figure out how to Krampus. Oh yes, Krampus. Ooh. I like that. Uh, yeah, because be you good. could do legends, and, and there's enough yeah. to split up. Um, across multiple yeah. shows, so there's gonna be a lot. 
Yeah, I do. We're moving one of the weekends. In oh December. my gosh! This again? But we can. Yeah, but uh, my schedule should be opened up to where we can move it around to a different day. Didn't you just move? No, I know this. Yes. <laughs> Didn't you move before that? <laughs> yes. It's. Yeah, this you will sound be the like last me. Time for a while. No, I moved a lot. It sucks. You moved a lot, like in your earlier days too. You know, back yeah. back in your um before you were sixty, right? Yep, yep. <laughs> in my twenties, I moved a lot. Yeah. Yep, just about every year for a while. Yeah, but it sucks. But when I you had have a stuff. lot less. Yeah. Stuff. <laughs> <laughs> that's that's exactly what I was thinking because it's like. Moving with no stuff is like, eh, whatever. I used to be able to pack all my stuff. I used to be able to walk my stuff between apartments because I stayed in the same yeah. apartment complex and just switched apartments every year. That's how, and never unpacked it. It was just in bins. And you just get out of the bins what you needed, put it back in the bins. I lived in bins. That's hilarious. Now, I, yeah, I, I mean, my the biggest thing that I had was a bed for the longest time. So I'd get a truck for that, um, or I, a buddy of mine had a truck and so he helped me move my bed a few times um but yeah it yeah i didn't have a lot of stuff so it was easy peasy for me just move on the bus yeah no yeah, no yeah. nowadays it sucks hiring yep. moving people hoping your stuff survives yeah honestly as long as um movers are involved then I, I mean, obviously, I don't want my stuff to get broken, but I do feel better about it because I'm like, well, at least I didn't have to move anything. <laughs> <clears throat> my family has never, uh, I don't know, I don't think we've ever hired movers. We've always moved ourselves. Yeah. But now everybody's yep. old and backs hurt. Yeah. Yep. Now's the time. Yep. Last, our last move was the first time we hired movers. It's and expensive. we're definitely doing it again. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I know. There is there is a, a sense of nice. It's nice. Yeah, because then you just point and you're like, I want that box <laughs> over here. Like boxes end up in the right area for the most part. And then you just unpack again. Hey, Craig. It's, <laughs> Isn't that what they do to us? Hey, point. Remember? Uh, too bad, Jess. <laughs> so you guys are the movers. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Me and Craig have been the movers. And Craig, Craig, Craig and I have uh, the epic stories of moving in and out of the school. Oh, just lots of lots of interesting moving spots. But I think he he's still in better shape than I am. Um I think my back's taking the bigger hit. So it's interesting. And he's had he yeah. and I and then I've had the more of the seated job than he has. He has a standing job. So that's kind of interesting, right? Maybe my back's weak. I'm weak. Yeah. I don't know. I I get hurt a lot more that I'm sitting all day than when I used to work, you know, more, <laughs> more uh, physical work. I was thinking of woods people like, you know, back in the day, you know, people that had to survive, you know, they're all hardy and stuff. And, you know, <laughs> you like, do like a Bill and Ted's, like all my teleporting and time porting usually goes either back to the future or Bill and Ted's. That's like my, my two like methods. You, know, you either got a cool car or a telephone booth. And, um, but yeah, you think about that. Oh, who? I touched like some guy. Oh, it's my neighbor. I think my neighbor Keith. I touched his arm, and he's like tight. It's like, oh my god, dude, you got like real muscles. And so yeah, <laughs> it's like it's like it's That's like an you know. awesome story. By the way. <laughs> <laughs> I, I touched his shoulder. By the way, that's the part of him that I touched. But it was just you're so, like you're so muscly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, it was just like, and Link's, Link's getting that a little bit, but it was just funny because even in my, in my muscly, like more muscly days, it's like, I never, I don't think I had that, but, um, no. but yeah, 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 I was thinking of, yeah, you compare it to like the woodsy people back in the day and you bring them to Danau and, you know, have them next to me and yeah, you can take hits and you could probably, you could probably do a little bit. <laughs> You're more hardy. <laughs> yep. Yep. For sure. All right. Well. Uh, oh yeah, I didn't see. Um, once the duel, Craig won the duel. Oh yeah, I forgot. Yeah, feels good. We didn't do it again, so we ran our credits. Um, we'll see you next week, and there will be a couple outages. You said in December. Is that one one weekend? This one, something like yeah. that. Okay. 
I yep. guess so. We'll figure that out. Maybe we'll shift today. Who knows? Yeah. Cool. That sounds right. good. Bye, everyone. Bye. Bye.